everyone and welcome back to The Journey. As you can see today we're going to be talking about pediatrics, in particular club foot. Now the big medical term for club foot is tapus equinovirus and pretty much what it means is that there is an abnormal um, positioning of the feet. So the, the feet is not in normal position, okay? That's pretty much in layman terms what that means. But for those of you guys who are um, more detailed and want to know exactly what is going on, okay, it is a complex deformity involving the ankles and the foot where the forefoot has an abduction, okay? The midfoot has a supination and it involves the hind foot virus and the ankle equinus, okay? Um, it can either be unilateral or bilateral. Of course, you know, if it's bilateral, it's going to be worse because now you have to treat both legs rather than just one leg, okay? But um, if you see it like that, it's because it can be either or, all right? Also, just a little bit of fun fact, boys are affected two times more than the uh, females, okay? It is 17 times greater, right, in families who have a history of clubfoot, and it is most common in Polynesian, which is like your Hawaiian uh, the heritage, uh, that type of background, that, that culture, and it is least likely in your Asian descent, okay? And also the causes. So the causes, there are not exact causes that can actually say why um, some kids come out with club feet and others don't, but these are some possible causes of why you may see this occur. So it may be some abnormal interurine um, positioning, right? So as the baby's in the womb and it has this leg curled inward, um, that can also cause the club foot to occur. Neuro, neuromuscular slash vascular um, development where when there's poor circulation, the body wasn't able to be fully developed. Somewhere along the line, there's a disruption and that's what caused the club feet. And ultimately, again, genetics, okay? If you have a family history, you are seven time, 17 times more greater, okay? Of seeing, you know, a child or someone in your family to come out with club feet. So now we have our clinical manifestations, which is also known as our signs and symptoms, which is also known as our nursing assessment. So in order for us to know um, what we're assessing, it's pretty much pure observation and you're looking to see the position of the foot, okay? The, based on the position of the foot, is going to let you know exactly what's going on and how it can be treated, okay? So the first one you have is uh, Tapolis virus, which is pretty much inversion or bending inward. So Inversion, right? In, I, N, think of going inward, right? So it's the feet is positioned inward, all right? Um, the tapis valgus is an aversion or bending outward of the foot, okay? Aversion, you can think of E for external, right? External is outside, so you can think of it's going outward, okay? It's bending outward, okay? Tapis equinus is your plantar flexion, okay? And what that is, is pretty much the toes are lower than the heel, okay, so the midfoot is, at, is actually pointing downward, okay. And then last but not least, you have your tapis calcanus, which is a dorsiflexion of the foot in which the toes are higher than the heel, okay. And the involvement of tissues or tendons or muscles, right, so you have muscles and tendons in the bones with, within, the, within the foot are being involved, okay, so this can let you know that this is not going to be an easy fix, right. All right, you also have, it's a, it's a small foot that is going to be shortened with the Achilles tendon, okay? So the, the Achilles tendon is going to be shortened, right? You have a small foot, it is going to be shortened. You also have muscle in the lower leg is going to be atrophied, and what atrophied means is pretty much uh, shrink in size or small in size, okay? So the muscles in the lower, in the lower part of the foot, okay, is going to be shortened. But the leg length is going to be the same. So the child will have their same leg length. It's the foot, the muscles in, in the foot is small, hence the fact that they have small feet with a shortened Achilles tendon, okay? And this cannot be fixed with exercise. So with the diagnosis, it's pretty much made by birth, and like I said before, it's pure observation, so it's going to be a visual um, diagnosis, but it is going to be confirmed on an x-ray to show what the severity is. So the, so, so the x-ray is going to show the severity of it, okay? Intervention, so I put in blue, so that way you can kind of get the gist of what we're trying to do and trying to achieve is we're forcing the foot outward instead of inward, okay? Because the feet are inward and we want to position it outward so that way they can walk on the soles of their feet, okay? So 
you're going to treat ASAP, okay, as soon as possible, right? Because with that, you reduce complications and you get the best outcome for that child, okay? So when should you do the procedure? When should you start intervention? ASAP, as soon as possible. So if that is a question, it's as soon as possible, all right? Also, what you're doing is you're manipulation, you're, you're doing manipulation and casting, okay? So when you want to position something in a certain way, you're going to cast it off. So you're going to um, do casting every week or every two weeks, okay? For about eight to 12 weeks because remember these kids grow very very fast remember during infancy you can you can tell if you have kids before um, one one month turns into three months and they've gone they've grown so much so the casting has to be adjusted based on um, their growth development okay so that's the reason why you constantly see them changing into in and out of cast because they're constantly growing at that stage very very rapidly okay so once it is corrected, all right, yeah, this is going to happen for 8 to 12 weeks. Once it is corrected, splinting or reverse casting is going to be done, okay? And if it cannot be corrected or it's not being corrected even after the casting has been on for 12 weeks or so, surgical intervention is going to take place. And that is going to happen when there is no normal alignment that is occurring, okay? So you want to see this achievement within 6 to 12 weeks. If you don't see this achievement, then you're going to go ahead and do a surgical intervention. So now we have the nursing interventions, all right? So the nursing inter intervention is mainly going to be the cast care because remember, they're going to have this cast on for 8 to 12 weeks, right? Switching it out every 1 to 2 weeks. So the main thing is going to be cast care that you want to teach the parents and also while the kid is in the hospital or has to be hospitalized, what the nurse should look out for, okay? So within cast care, the main thing, I don't know if you guys can see, but I put it in red, is your CMS. And CMS pretty much stands for your circulation and color, movement, and sensation. That's the main thing that you want to be aware of when a patient has a cast on. And this is not just only for um, pediatrics, but just cast care in general. You want to make sure that you're watching out for the circulation because um, like anything, if you was to put a string and you wrapped it really tight around your, your finger, right, all of a sudden that circulation is now, you know, um, it's going to be compromised. So it may have swelling in that area. The color is no longer looking nice and pink. It's looking more of a bluish color, right? And also you may lose sensation, right? And then finally, when you unravel it, right, you start to see that the color comes back, the swelling goes down. So again, that's the same thing of what a cast is doing, right? It's like a barrier, something that is wrapping itself around the skin. And if there is any tightness that is going to occur, you want to make sure that they're still able to move their fingers, that they're still able to have sensation, and that the color and... Um, and circulation is not being compromised, okay? So that is the main thing with any cast care whatsoever, okay? So for starters, if the patient is using a plastic cast, okay, which now they have newer technologies, I don't even think they're using um, plastic casts anymore. Uh, they have more um, better technology that the drying time is very, very fast. But if, if they are still using plastic casts, depending on the position, Right? It takes 24 to 48 hours to dry. So you have to be mindful as a nurse to have gentle hands, gentle fingers, because you don't want to have any impressions or indentations within the cast. Because again, the more indentations, right, or per, um, pressure that is um, going on the skin, right, those now become pressure areas, right, which um, puts a big risk for circulation comp um, compromising. So you want to make sure that um, you have dent um, gentle hands, gentle fingers, so that way there is no indentation on that cast, okay? Also, you want to elevate the extremity on a pillow to heart level, and you want to do that to reduce the swelling and also to increase the blood return, okay? Again, drainage and bleeding, you want to mark um, with the circle, date, and time, so then that way you can see is, you know, do we have a complication here or with the patient's bleeding out, what's going on, so that way you can know how fast the patient's bleeding out. So if you have the time and the date, and all of a sudden it was this this small, and you check again within 30 minutes or so, and it's this, this big, and you check again and it's this big, right, 
that gives you kind of a, a, a scale to kind of monitor exactly how much the patient is bleeding at what rate and you know determine how much blood loss okay so you definitely want to date and time on the cast also you want to uh, check within the 24 hours the first 24 hours you want to check every uh, 15 to 30 minutes for two hours and then an hour to two hours for the remainder of the of the 24 so you are gonna check 15 to 30 minutes for two hours and then every hour to two hours thereafter and then for the next two days you're going to check the the extremities of the cast every four hours okay also you want to check the edges of the cast sometimes it can have rough edges or crumbling edges right that can interfere with the actual skin itself and compromise skin integrity right so what you want to do it has like the cast has inner stocking so you want to pull that inner stocking and put it over it so that way it can protect the the outer skin all right well, of course that's going to be on the foot because we're talking about the club foot here and or what you can do you can put tape secure it around with, with tape and that is called pedaling so if you have a test question and they say you know what what can the nurse do to um prevent skin skin compromise or skin breakdown because of the crumbling of the the cast if they have the term pedaling that lets you know it's pretty much taping the the rough edges all around okay so that way it will prevent that from happening also, you want to keep the cast clean and dry. If anyone ever had a cast, okay, I had a cast, you have to keep it dry. So by that, you may have to use a plastic bag. I know when I had my cast, it was from my arm, and the cast literally started from here all the way up here. So I had to put a, a, a garbage bag. That was the only bag that could fit. So again, it's club feet. These kids are small, so they shouldn't have a problem just using a regular plastic bag. But your main thing is you want to keep it clean and dry. All right. Also, don't put anything in the cast. I know it may be tempting, especially uh, if it's itching and you see the kid wants to itch and you feel so sorry for the, for, the, for the baby and you're like, oh my gosh, you know, you just want to do something. Do not put anything in the cast because again, if something gets put in the cast, if, it's, if it gets stuck, right, what's going to happen? Your CMS is going to be compromised, right? Because you already have a tight space to work with and now when something is in there, it presses on it more, it, it, it compromises circulation, the color, movement, sensation, okay? So again, as much as it may be itchy, you don't want to put anything in the cast, all right? Also, no powder, no lotion, okay? So in, that, in those areas, you don't want to use any powders, you don't want to use any lotion. You can put it on the other parts of the body, but for the feet, you definitely don't want to put any of that at all. All right, and these are the main things that you're going to see and that you're going to teach the parents when they have to go home with the child. By that time, they'll probably be approached because for eight to 12 weeks being casted, they will definitely be able to know what's going on and how to um, effectively treat and care for the cat. And last but not least, um, to continue on with the nursing interventions, you want to provide emotional support, all right, and you want to encourage the, the parents because, again, you know, when you think of having a baby, you're not thinking of any complications, you're not thinking about any deformities or any abnormalities with your kid. You want the best for them. So when you see your kid in that state, you know, um, it can be very emotional for the for those parents. So you definitely want to, you know, support them, encourage them, let them know that you know there are. Um, Communities out there, you know, health groups, um, emotional support groups, because, you know, guaranteed they're not the only uh, person out there who has to deal with this. So sometimes when they can be around a group of other parents who have to deal with it or have been in different stages where, you know, um, they may be starting, you know, their first week in the cast where you have other parents and they, they're in their eighth week or they're in their their sixth week or their twelfth week, right? It gives hope knowing that right interventions are working, the kid is getting better, so it kind of helps them. So you can encourage them and also give information about support groups that are out there in the community so that way they can help um, get through this process a lot easier. Also, you want to provide cast and race care, which I already mentioned before, and the main thing with that is pretty much your neurovascular assessment, okay? You want to make sure that you have your CMS your circulation, your movement, and your sensation. Also want to provide safety, right? Because these kids, 
you know, they're still infants, they're still babies, they don't know what's going on with their feet, you know, they want to move around, they want to kick, they want to do different things, you know, they cry, you know, different things that, that is going on, some maybe in the stages of they want to crawl, right, so you just want to provide safety and let them know, well not let them know because the kid won't know, but you as the parent set boundaries, set rules, so that way um, the kid can be safe, okay, the baby can be safe. Also, your sponge baths, because again, you want to prevent any um, any any complication with the cast. You do not want it to get wet. You want it to stay clean and dry. So your sponge bath is going to be the best ideal thing for the for the baby. And again, clothing. Okay, so we don't really think about it, right? Because you just want to dress them up and make them look all cute. But again, it's more ideal for girls to be in your dresses because then now you don't have to worry about. Um, the casting of the legs and for, for boys you want to put them in shorts where you can kind of like just um, have big holes so that way you can kind of fit through onesies would probably won't be the most ideal thing you know anything that's going to wrap around I mean you want to have quick access to see the circulation of the feet so again just be aware of telling the patients of um, parents that you know the dressing be aware of the dressing okay all right and that's pretty much it if you like this video go ahead and give it a thumbs up if you have any questions or comments please feel free to leave it in the comment section below also remember to check out my description box to see any added information and again if you have not uh, subscribed what are you waiting for go ahead and hit that subscribe button and if you want to follow me on Instagram, you can also go ahead and do that too. That information will be in the description box. And again, thank you for coming on this journey and see you on the next one.